Anthony Castillo's back on the pot again. <laughs> hey everybody, this is Sean B. Bradley, president of Dealer Synergy and the creator of the Millionaire Car Salesman Group. <laughs> I got my man here, Anthony Castillo. Anthony, what's up, brother? You are a veteran now. This is uh, not your first time being on the show. So welcome back. Welcome back to the number one Facebook group in the automotive industry and the number one podcast, the Millionaire Car Salesman Group. So what's up, brother? How you been? I've been good, man. I've been good. I've been actually uh, doing a lot of training after coming back from IS20G because, uh, you know, after everybody said, once you stop learning, you, you start dying. So I was like, oh, I got to take that a little bit seriously. But uh, I've been good, man. You know, back in Georgia. That's what's up. Well, let, let's actually take it back to IS20G. I have not interviewed anybody on the podcast since IS20G. So let's let's go. Let's give everybody what your impression was of the Internet Sales 20 Group Conference in Baltimore a couple weeks ago. It was great. I mean, I loved how consistent the content was. Um, it was the first conference I've ever been to of the of the sorts of any type um but i've heard about other ones where you gotta like pick and choose classes to go to and this was really cool that it was just streamlined um it was a long day but there was a lot of good information that was shared and then just the different minds that were in the room with all the different types of ideas and how everybody was able to contribute and it's like there's a whole bunch of different teams in the room but when we were all in there together it just felt like everybody was contributing to everyone's success question for you what was some of the content speakers or information that uh that you heard that really moved you or that just like impressed you or left an impression upon you that you're like damn this is strong i would probably have to say when roy spoke um that was that was pretty impactful like the way that he operates as a sales manager um it it was impressive because like sometimes when when you have sales managers and you're just you can see what they're doing all day and they're saying like call 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 um to have a sales manager that does that and then does just as many emails and just as many text messages and videos um i think it's impressive and like when you're around somebody who is as hungry as that it's just an infectious type of um energy that goes throughout the dealership or whichever room whatever type of thing is going on if you see somebody who's doing more work than you are it's just like you would feel bad if you're not doing that much work you know and then also i liked seeing damian mills and damon lester there because being able to see like representation at a dealer principal level was really cool and some of the things that he was saying that he's consistent and not fair um I, I took that to heart and then that's a lot of things that I was able to apply to myself and when he was saying he likes to operate like saying I get to rather than I got to yes. that that resonated with me I like the same week when I came back I, I started telling my kids I'm like hey man when you go to school just be happy say I, I get to go to school you know I, I get to be the big brother or the little brother and I, I'm like I get to be your dad so it's like it's a whole different way of looking at things and seeing things more of as opportunities rather than seeing them as like obligations um where there's still obligations but it feels better that way when you say like oh it's an opportunity and i get to do this type of thing so i get to help people get cars and i get to solve people's problems yeah man um that definitely spoke to me i get to versus i got to and i want to just take a moment and, and just acknowledge uh, a major loss to our, inter uh, our industry. One of our, our, our key speakers, Mark Irving, who is the vice president of um, search, uh, paid search at uh, local search labs, is, you know, crazy, man. I yeah. just can't believe that uh, he passed away. You know, I mean, he's 35 years old and here he is. He's a global speaker, you know, at uh, search labs and, uh, it just blows my mind that we just were with him two weeks ago. Young guy. I'm 47. The guy's 35 years old and he passed away uh, from a heart attack, they think. You know what I mean? So, you know, tomorrow's yeah. promised. And, and that, that really resonated with me, especially with what Damian Mills said about, like you just said, like, you know, 
I get to, not I got to. You know, we yeah. have privilege to be able to work in an incredible industry where we could learn, uh, we could earn a tremendous amount of revenue and income, bro. But mm -hmm. uh, it's almost too hard to to go through. I mean, like we worked really hard to create that curriculum, and you're right, it was packed. It was from 7 a.m. in the morning to on the first night to 10 p.m. Then yeah. The next day it was 7 a.m. to 9 p.m. And then mm -hmm. on the third day it was from 7 to uh, I think like 12:50 or, or 1 p.m. So it was a two and a half day, but it was packed in. And in that we had all these amazing dealer principles. We've had these panels. I mean, and you know what? I you know, I, I got a lot of feedback is the massive amount of diversity. We had a ton of women in automotive there. You know, oh, yeah. engineers, and we had the women automotive panel, and you know, the, the Damian Mills, like you mentioned, and Damon Lester, the diversity and the minority dealers. It was just such cultural diversity, and the mix from massive, high-level dealer principals and general managers there. It, it was, you know, it was designed. Yo, what'd you think about my man Andre Petrosky from the USC? <laughs> That was awesome. Uh, half of the time, I was sitting at the same table as him, and I was uh, for a second. I was like, "Am I supposed to be sitting here?" I don't know if there was a signed seat in, but it, like it was pretty cool because a lot of the <laughs> stuff that he was talking about and having a certain type of mentality, um, I I kind of like to think that way. I, I remember somebody saying, I saw actually on a on a job post hiring one time, somebody said for like car sales they want to hire athletic mind people. Um, because they're always putting everything out on the field. And as long as they put everything out on the field, even if it like you don't win, if you gave it your all, then you can walk away satisfied, you know, and like, you're not going to always make every car sale, you know, but if you do all the steps correctly and you put it all out there, it's going to result in a deal. And if, if it doesn't, it might be a deal later on down the road, but you'll feel satisfied rather than if you take a shortcut and you know you took a shortcut and that one little you know diversion could cost you a whole deal or could cost a whole game for certain people absolutely you know champions have a short mind uh short memory is what you're saying mm -hmm. but it's cool because usually when you have celebrities or professional people professional athletes and things like that they do a meet and greet they they get their check and leave my man was there for two full days he was hanging out yeah. with us he was doing lessons you know uh, he was really part of it uh you know it was almost like lion king man we're lion king we're passing him around like simba you know what i mean like he was mm -hmm. in the whole part of the tribe and uh I, what i try to do because you said you haven't been to my events before almost every single event we do some type of rock star vip event because to to your point it's a packed event you know, so there's a lot of education information, and I also want to make it an experience. Mm -hmm. That's why, you know, what do you think about Wifey turning around and opening it up with, uh, you know, the buy a car music, like a live performance? And that you know, that was cool. It was it was actually funny because right before the event happened, like a like a week or two before, I was on the IS20G website, and then I found the tab where it was like music videos, and I got curious, and I started clicking on them, and I watched all of them, and like, I'd have to say my favorite one so far was the, the Hotline Bling one. Yeah. Um, that was hilarious, you know, and I actually <laughs> sent that to people, like, if people weren't answering the phone, uh, I would send that to them, and I'd be like, hey, I think you'd, you'd be interested in this video, and I got some good responses from it, because I mean, yes. it's like, it was a good song and it was relatable to like the whole situation. I'm trying to help you get a car. You know, you asked me. Well, brother, that's the whole point. That thing went actually viral. That was a Vimeo because when it was on YouTube, it had like a, almost a million views. It was like 800,000 views. And then Drake's people flagged it, you know, the record label. But mm -hmm. it, we weren't trying to make money on it. It was just a parody. It was a remix of the Hotline yeah. Blitz. So what's happening is for the people who don't, don't know, because we haven't told anybody, the only people that know about what's going on is people that were at IS20G, except for right now. We'll talk about it. Yeah. So Karina and Synergy uh, Records, we remixed Taylor Swift's Shake It Off to buy a car. And it is major label quality. It's, it's super high level. So what we did is we had Karina open up the IS20G with buy a car. But the plan was, if you saw all my video production was there, we shot 
her live performance. We shot, you know, the the VIP part of the cocktail hour, and you know the all the stuff with uh, you know all the celebrities and dealers. Like that's all footage that's going to be in the real music video. Mm -hmm. I don't want to mention the name, but I've got a client and a very close friend of mine that is a Rolls Royce, Lamborghini, Maserati, um, Bentley, and some other Highline exotic franchise. So we're about to shoot in the next week um, part of the real music video at a Lambo Rolls Royce dealership for buy a car. Okay. And so what we're going to do is that video that we played, that's not the real music video. That was just the lyric video so people could see it on the screens while she was performing. We're okay. going to actually produce a super high level music video called Buy a Car. And hopefully it'll go industry viral like the last one did, you know? Yeah. Yeah. That sounds like a good plan. I think I think it's creative. And I mean, parodies are always good because yeah, people, people make them up. All, they make them up all the time, you know? Yeah. So, especially car related stuff. I know yes. like, the whole industry can relate to it. I can relate to it. I like music. I make music myself. Um, but to see that, I thought it was cool because I've even thought about like I've made music and reference car stuff, but not as deep as you, how y'all went <laughs> with like everything in the industry. I'm just talking about like appointments and stuff. But like yeah. what you guys had was serious. And I was like, okay, I got to <laughs> step it up a notch. <laughs> No, but I, I got this idea like a decade ago because I'm in the National Speakers Association and the NSA is like the NFL for paid professional speakers. And, and part of the stagecraft is, think about this, when you're at a con like a conference like that, mm -hmm. you want the audience participation. So follow the psychology about this. We want these dealers, like dealer principals, GMs, automotive professionals, managers, to be to feel like they're part of something different, something special, something unique. And so part of that is all that you saw, the 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 uh, the instructional design, the speakers, the sessions, the VIP parties, but then also creating this custom music video and allowing the attendees to star in the music video. You know what I mean? To be part of this 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 little slice of history. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. I think it's great. It goes to build the the tribe it, it goes to perpetuate the brand loyalty and and the community of the millionaire car salesman and um what do you think about the award ceremony shout out to all the winners uh mm -hmm. won this year's the 2024 millionaire car salesman awards man it was uh you know well deserved what do you think about that uh, i think it was awesome i think i think having people that we're able to get awards from the from the podcast and just from being from a club too for having good ideas and things like that i think that was cool because one thing i was i'm an avid listener of the podcast and then i joined the facebook group and when i joined the facebook group out it was a huge sense of community you know and then being able to see everybody help each other out on there and then sometimes there's funny stuff but um then taking that and going to is20g and seeing the community in person you know, that was really, really cool. And it was it was crazy because there were some people I met there that worked with some of the people that I work at right now, my new store, you know, so it was just like the world seemed huge and it got smaller and smaller and smaller. But there's a lot of a lot of experience in that room, you know. Yeah. Now, you know what? I got a lot of feedback, too. And because I, I created the room in the, the space and the community. It's a little bit different for me, but what I got a lot of feedback was they were like, thank you because, you know, you're, you listen to the podcast of, of like you, you know what I mean? Like you're on the podcast and then all of a sudden, if you're at 20, IS 20 G people get to meet like, Oh, I, I heard Anthony's episode. That was crazy. You know? And people said that to you that they like about your yeah. podcast and stuff like that. And, you know, when you're in the group and you see D pen posting a Roy Davila posting and, and the comments in the back and forth, then you get to, you get to meet them like live in person. Mm -hmm. It just it said it, it brings it, you know, all to, all to life. So yeah, um, I'm really appreciative that you were able to come through and let's transition into you, man. And the reason why I wanted you on this podcast is that you impressed the hell out of me at the event. I mean, again, I kept on hearing from you and, and the Corvette specialist guy and, you know, a couple other the salespeople. I'm just a salesperson. I'm like, stop that shit, man. Like, you're not just anything. You know, you brought so much value. Like, look at the level of people that were there 
and you held your own. That's like getting into the UFC and the heavyweight championships. And then, you know what I mean? And you, you or like a Rocky type moment. Yeah. You know I mean, you have these big Apollo Creed type people and here you come in and you're like, you're, you're throwing down you, your knowledge, yeah. bombs, knowledge bombs, resources. They're like, yo, who is this guy, Anthony? Where has he been? So tell yeah. people, um, what did you talk about at the IS20G? Talk about your experience on the panel. Talk about your, your experience conversing and sharing because you were very, very vocal in the audience and on stage. So kind of tell us what, what you feel your contribution was for IS20G. So I had, I had the opportunity to speak on the artificial intelligence panel mm -hmm. um, and how I utilize AI within my dealership and just to help streamline my work um what what we have is like we we operate off of uh drive centric the crm and the, it has an ai which i i have to say like i spoke with steve rossler when i was at is20 g2 and um i i had to give him props i was like you know a couple weeks ago i wasn't as in love with the drive centric ai because i i use chat gpt and i trained my own bot like my own chat bot to think like me, to talk like me and to help me, you know, correspond with all of my clients and using all of like my CRM notes when I'm on the phone with people just to help tie in like a more comprehensive email, something that sounds, it's not like fluff and it's also not just short in like a couple words, um, but it's what I use it as is like a summary an assistant to just jot down everything that I learned from them and to put it into an email and then, or put it into a text message just to keep the conversation going. Um, and I was surprised on how many people, you know, had a little bit of reservations about AI because they were, what I understood is like, they don't understand it. And, right. you know, I feel like the education part of it is, a little bit people overthink it and i'd say just like talk to any of the ai as like a person you know and tell it what you want it to do you don't have to think about like acting like a coder or somebody who does programming you literally just talk to it like a person and it's going to be able to help you with what what you want to get accomplished so you were on this show before what would you like to add because i talk to people all the time i don't let a lot of people back on the show because i have a lot of people that i got i got a book on this thing right mm -hmm. but you know when i find people like you that have such um charisma or subject matter uh expertise i definitely want you to come back on what do you feel like you'd like to add from the last episode that you were on our show the the last episode was the owners club and as you can see mm -hmm. like the, yeah. the backdrop um this is actually the new design to the boxes so everybody at the, at the conference saw the old design this is the new one um but the owners club you know what i'd like to like reiterate on it's it's there to help you maximize like back-end profit but also not doing it in a in a slimy way you know it's what i've always heard is like happy people spend more money you know and like to me even though i've only been in the industry for a short amount of time what i like to do is paint an experience for people and just like on a lot of the training where you want to exceed their expectations like they're so used to just coming in and doing a couple of documents going on a couple of test drives and visiting different places but when i let's say they're the first stop or i'm their last stop you know if I get a commitment and I make a deal, I want to go above and beyond. And like before they even hit finance, everything that I reiterated on test drives about technology and then kind of setting up my finance manager for success, um, it helps paint the experience and people are happy and they don't have this big defensive wall when they go into finance, you know, but when you do things like that, it's getting a little bit more loyalty because people will remember you like i know everybody's going to talk about the car i know they're going to you know tell everybody about the features they're going to say oh the dealership was cool but i want them to remember me you know and i want them to be able to talk about me after they leave the dealership because i've had i even have hired people that i've sold cars to at my store mm -hmm. um because they were like oh like just buying a car for me was so impressive they were like i have to come here i want to be part of the team and they've actually been trying to bring their own source of referrals to me um which is great but it's just 
creating a community kind of like you did with the millionaire millionaire car salesman's club i'm trying to just create a community with the people that i sell cars to you know and then make sure that they don't forget me and i'm always on the front of their mind you know because mm. i'll always have like follow up and then i've been what everybody heard on the last episode was more of a covid version of the owners club and i've yeah. since changed it because of how everything's changing with the industry um to be more of like a modern version of the owners club because uh, a lot of people i remember i made a post on on the facebook group and everybody's like well how do you afford to like spend all that money on gifts and stuff and i still get people gifts i'm not going to shortchange them on that but mm -hmm. what i have done is i would always tell people like this is for your owner's manual later on down the road and for you to keep all your documents in. And if you ever need to refer to it, instead of looking for a black wallet, if you have this in a closet or in your office or in your garage, you're going to see a bright, elaborate box that's easy to catch your eye. It's easy to find and it's going to keep all your documents in it. But what I do now is I actually just put the manual in the box for them at delivery where before I would leave the manual in the car. Now, when I have the owner's manual in the box, it has a lot more weight and it feels like people are impressed when I hand this over to them. Before, I was doing this ahead of time because most of my car deals were orders and I got to go know these people for a couple weeks or a couple months before they came in. Now I had the adapt it for people same day because I'm meeting people same day and I'm selling them a car the same day or within a week. So instead of getting everything set up on the front on the front end, after I get done doing paperwork, I actually keep the boxes right by my desk and I just take them out and start putting it together in front of them without even saying a thing. And then they start to inquire, like, what are you doing? And then I go into the whole spiel of what the owner's club is. And I thank them and I welcome them into this exclusive you know, group where they get additional benefits. But the thing is, is that it's always evolving and it doesn't just stay stagnant at gifts. It's like incorporating local businesses and creating a network of people. Let's, let's talk about that then right now. So for the people that, that didn't catch the last episode that you were on, explain to them exactly what the Owners Club is, please. The Million Man Car Salesman Podcast is on your radio. Yo, yo, yo. Listen, if you don't have access to Bradley On Demand, you're missing out on crucial information. The top automotive groups like Coons, Lithia, and Norm Reeves have all used Bradley On Demand to train their teams. And guess what? The world's number one car salesman, Cody Carter, shares his exclusive strategies right here. You want his secrets? You gotta have Bradley On Demand. Stop waiting and start winning. Dominate your market. Click the link and get access now. So... From top to bottom, it's it's a group that I'm putting together. First of all, it's a physical box that I give people. It's printed. It looks like this right behind me. It has um, printing on the inside and the outside. It's kind of modeled after a shoebox. Um, and on the side, I always write down the year and model. But during the whole experience and when people finally end up committing and buying a car, I turn around and... First of all, I do a service walk. And what I do now is I take them around. I'm putting this box together right in front of them. And I everything that you do on the test drive, when you're talking about technology and you set your finance manager up with warranties and maintenance plans and things like that. Well, what the owner's club is, is that I've, I've actually networked with businesses in my area. And when I was in Colorado, I networked with a couple of businesses out there and I have a plastic business card that goes with the gift box. And I tell people to keep it with them at all times. Um, it's credit card thickness, so it feels good and it fits in a wallet perfectly. And if they accidentally wash their pants, it's not going to deteriorate. But that card is kind of like a booster card from like football teams or if anybody's familiar with like when you have to sell things for the beginning of the season in order to get your equipment yeah. and jerseys. Um, well, in Colorado, I partnered with WeatherTech. And the reason why I did that is because everybody like I would say pr probably four times out of 10, I would have people ask me like, do I get free floor mats? You know, when I when I buy this car and I'm a couple times I did it, but then I end up paying for it because I have to like come out of pocket or I take it out of the deal and I lose profit there. Um, so I thought about a workaround and my store didn't ever like including them for free. 
or even you know charging them to a deal they just want people to buy them up front so instead i had a weather tech store where i got with one of the sales reps over there and they gave me a box of their business cards i incorporated it into my delivery process and i said hey by the way since you're part of the owners club now you do get exclusive benefits at certain places in the area such as weather tech if you go and see uh my colleague over there you have to go work with her exclusively she'll give you 10 percent off of any weather tech item for as long as she works there and you have to just go see her but you got to show her this card and that's why it's important to keep it on you right now now that I'm in Georgia, I'm rebuilding like a network of local businesses. I'm reached and since I work for Subaru, there's a lot of outdoor enthusiasts. So like right now I'm trying to work with a um outfitting company to see like, oh, when somebody buys a Subaru and I'm thinking about putting together uh a network. So every single time I sell a car, I add these people into a group, say, hey, this person just purchased a car for me. And I'm going to have all those people send like a congratulations email and say, hey, by the way, now that you're part of the owners club, you get exclusive benefits. And this is going to come straight from the companies that are doing that, you know, do their own business. But instead of me, I'm going to reiterate it at delivery. But then again, they're going to send them like a, hey, congratulations. Thank you for doing business like how we do when we follow up within the next couple of days after the, we sell a car to somebody. You know, um, but the owner's club is an experience. I would always it's it's more at the end of things, but you have to build it up throughout the whole process. So when I'm working with people, I always try to listen out to like key things where I can pick like if I know my parts department well enough, I'll listen out for certain things that they say and i say oh they might like this they might like that and then when i finally sell the car to them i tailor gifts in there and i'll get i'll now i'll take them and this is how i found out to save some extra money is that before i'm a little bit extra and ambitious and i'll end up spending money more money than i should on each customer but now when i walk back with guests and i actually bring them back there they pick out their own items and they always feel bad because they're like is the store paying for this and i'm like no 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 i I get you these items and this is going to be like my thank you for you coming all the way across town and doing business with me exclusively. And like, they'll try to say no again. And I'm like, no, I don't let anybody leave here without some gifts, you know, then they automatically go ahead and pick one of the first things. And I've actually worked with my parts department to put like the cheaper items that are nice enough quality up front. So when they do turn around and grab something off the shelf, it's actually one of the more affordable accessories or one of the more affordable, um, like cups or hats, things like that. I put all the most affordable things within arm's reach and they get to pick it out. So it's even a more of like an immersive experience for them. And then I turn them around and introduce them to my parts department and they get to put the items in their box, in the box themselves. And then at my new store, we have a really nice delivery bay. So when I'm done with my service walk, I get to take them out to the car, go through a little, you know, explanation on setting up their phone and connecting that before finance but while i do that and when i'm going over all the features in depth i let them know like hey you know by the way since you're part of the owners club now you did the same way that you get exclusive benefits at weather tech um, at some of these other companies as well in the outfitting store just to get some cool camping gear my business manager he is going to go over some warranties and maintenance plans with you but since you're part of the owners club you will qualify for a special promotion. Now, the thing is, is the promotion is whatever the finance manager is going to do, because their job is they know how much they have to make on every product and how many products they have to sell per deal. But whenever they're working with somebody, they're going to tailor it exactly to their needs and make and as many people as happy as possible. But the promotion isn't necessarily anything real. I just let my finance managers do what they do. But since they're all worked up and excited, they're going through their gift box. They got their Subaru hat on. They're eating candy. Um, when they go into the the business office, their their defenses are down. They're not wore out. Like the experience isn't, you know, energy draining. They're more excited to actually like, I'm ready to do the paperwork. I'm ready to drive my car. And my finance manager has the room that he needs to make people happy, you know. So with tying in all these benefits and discounts from other places, 
it makes them more receptive when they're talking to the business manager. And then when I'm going over all the technology with them, I, I always try to reiterate, like, you know, if this touchscreen went out, that would really, you know, be bad because a lot of the car's features is worked into the infotainment system. Um, and what I want you to do is just have as smooth as an ownership experience as possible. So if you plan on driving this car for the next 10 years, at least for the next seven years or for the next five years or three years, however long you deem fit. And if you think it's worth it, because if you don't see value in it, I wouldn't expect you to buy it. But if you are in the slightest bit interested, let my business manager know and he can tailor it exactly to your needs. And sometimes you just have to say it to people and they'll be more receptive to it rather than just like letting them be surprised. You give them like a little tap on the shoulder and say, hey, by the way, if you're in the slightest interested in any of these things. Now, again, if you don't think it's a good idea at all, don't get it. But if you think it is then I would actually see what they have to say about it and how they can make it work in your situation. You know, um, listen, it's so awesome to hear you say this because when I was working at Fine Belt and uh, Cherry Hill Nissan and the dealerships when I was selling cars, I did very similar things. I did cross promotional marketing with the local businesses. I love what you're doing, but think about what people can also do or, or utilize on a more consistent basis too. And, and think about this, you, your focus, which I love on the, on the, on the customer and you're creating this owner's club's value. I love that. Keep doing that, but watch this. What about adding the ability to leverage more of the local businesses in a way where they want to generate referrals for you, the local businesses, and promote you. For mm -hmm. example, like restaurants, um, uh, restaurants, or uh, I think let's start with the restaurants. You know what I mean? Like if you've got a like a sandwich shop or, or a local, you know, I don't know, a Mexican restaurant or whatever it might be, going in there and saying to them, "Hey," and I wouldn't, I love what you said with the salesperson. But I like to go right to the top. I want to go to the owner or go to the manager and say, "Listen, I'm one of the senior sales consultants at ABC Motors, and I have this program, this owner's box. I'd love to be able to partner with you." If there's anything that I can do or receive from you, whether they're discounts, they're free appetizers, or there's some type of promotion, I'd love to be able to tie it. Now think about this from the owner's perspective. Most small businesses do not have a fraction of the budget that a car dealership has or a platform like a car dealership has. And here you are um, in front of all these people and all these prospects these companies do free appetizers or 10% off or this or whatever it might be. And to your point, it's like those value pack coupons, like those booster things. You're on the right track, brother, but create more. Now think about this. You, with the money that you're making, you make good money. You can get an easy WordPress website. You know what I mean? And did you think about having an owner's club website just for the benefits? So people could turn around and, and see what, how their membership with you, like American Express memberships got privileges. Mm -hmm. Where can, where can their owner's club, uh, uh, card take them in the local community? What restaurants can they get discounts for? What gym can they get a free, uh, 30 days at? Think about this. Some, some places like I'm into huge into the martial arts, something like that you could go to different like a uh, local jujitsu places, whatever. And if their normal thing is, you know, you get three days or you get 30 days for free, maybe with you, they get something extra that you could add in. You know what I mean? Cause you want it yeah. to be that it's, it's special, but the idea is, is the cross motion. And think about this. You can, now you have extra content for your social media, for mm -hmm. Facebook. Say, Hey, owners club just partnered with another company so now you're like making moves bro yeah you know i mean that's now awesome. that's yeah bro it's, it's tight you know what i'm saying like it's like owners club just signed up with balance studios you know for jujitsu you get one private lesson with you know fifth degree you know black belt ricardo mcgarese you know what i mean or something like that you know what i'm saying yeah. <laughs>
Yeah. That, that's actually, that's great because I've been <laughs> thinking about for my, my like online content for the, for the owner's club. I'm like, what else can I put up? And like, I've been thinking about a way, how can I put that stuff more in front of people rather than just like videos of cars and like, Andy, you know, well, cool... listen, tag me in dog. My turn. My, my yeah. show. Let, me, let, me talk, <laughs> let me talk. Let me talk. So follow me on this. So check this out, brother. Think about this. You could even do a live IG live, Facebook live at, let's just call it um, Mama's Meatballs and Pizzeria. Yo, this is your boy, Sean V. Bradley. I'm here at Mama's Meatballs. Yo, Barstool Sports just gave them a, a, a 8.5 star rating, which means that this is one of the top places. And guess what? We just partnered with them. So if you're part of the owner's club, we got sp- special perks, special benefits, man, this food is delicious. And what you're doing is you're promoting it. Think about this. This is crazy too. Now think about the psychology of the the businesses that you're working with. You don't think that they're going to put that on social media, that that the local car dealership is promoting them and hyping them up and, and, and promoting them. So now you've got indirect advertising from all of those people. Let that marinate, dog. Dude. <laughs> That's cross promotional marketing, right or wrong? Yeah, no, that's right. Yeah, and and the other thing is this: those products that you got, how much do you come out of your own pocket on those things? It's roughly thirty five. I would say, like with the box, tissue paper, and a couple of the gifts, like probably thirty five bucks. Oh, uh, listen, you know my background, right? Like I went to Amsterdam when I was importing my shit from another country, yeah. New York. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You're yeah, Alibaba, bro. You know what Alibaba is? Yeah. Okay. Why are you not going to Alibaba and looking at mugs and then finding another company that's that you could turn around for like I don't know ninety nine cents or a dollar ninety nine, get a cup that's twenty dollars or some some ish like that. You know what I mean? You got to think about going to MetaLink for product. You know what I'm saying? Don't go to Uptown. Yeah. Go to yeah. MetaLink. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Think about yeah. it. You can get it at a fraction of the cost. Think like a boss. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? I've been I've been working on that. I've actually reached out to a company that makes some gear like with owners yeah. club stuff on it. Yes. Um but I haven't done it yet, but I'm writing that down so I can remember to do it cuz that this is all great stuff. Listen, you got to understand some look, learn from people. Do you know that Versace sunglasses, I just copped a pair for wifey for IS20G like 475, like ridiculous, right? You know who makes them? The same company that makes Ray-Bans and the same company that makes like the the Momo brand, you know? They're mm-hmm. probably all Versace glasses are probably made for I don't know 7 or 8 dollars and they sell them for 400 bucks or whatever ridiculous markup it is. Find find the manufacturer that you could get it at, at cost, I'll give an example. One of my, uh, you know, other companies I have is Gracie on Demand. You know, with the with Daniel Gracie and and the whole UFC stuff that I do. And do you think like when I when we when we create geese, you know where I go? I go to Pakistan, son. I got video footage of, of the manufacturer. I got a whole factory in Pakistan that 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 creates the the jujitsu geese. Mm-hmm. That a oh, jujitsu gi at this level, high quality, it's about two hundred dollars, right? With the woven. Um, uh, embroidery uh, of the logos and all that stuff. I'm talking about like not just one, like on the leg, on the on the on the geek back, and on the on the breast patch. What I pay for that, man, it's insane. I pay like twenty nine ninety nine. I pay like thirty dollars, and I can make a hundred and seventy dollars markup profit in it because I'm going out of the country and having it produced in Pakistan or something like that. So yeah. my my idea for you is think like a boss. Think about where you can get things made. I mean, there's such globalization right now. I mean, like, you know, we have, you were at IS20G and Bob Ruth Ford has a whole team of BDC reps from the Philippines and they sell 250 internet deals a month. You watched it with your own eyes. You heard from the dealer principal, you heard from everybody there. So don't just be limited to just Georgia, brother. You know what I mean? Or like to Amazon in the United States. Think Mm -hmm. about what you want and figure out how can you get it the absolute cheapest. And then when you think you got it cheap, it figure out, okay, where do they get it from? And try to find out their connect. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I work with the middleman. Bosses talk with bosses, not the middlemen. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. Right or wrong? Absolutely. No, you're right. Now, I got a couple questions for you. Um, Do you have a bird dog at the the dealership? Because, Georgie, you're legally allowed to offer bird dogs. Yeah, we have have a uh, $100 bird dog that goes out i now i'm still working on getting people to come back for this but um i've had i've offered 
kind of like what what you've spoken about on some episodes with the 250 then 350 yeah. 500 because my idea is exactly like kind of what you explained like i want to get somebody excited like this can be a, a yeah. whole side hustle um i haven't had people actually bring me multiples because i've also had like some of my sales people that i work with they're like dude you're crazy and i'm like well how many people are gonna you know realistically give you three people a yes. month you know but if somebody does and you actually give them 1100 bucks they're yeah. gonna continue doing it you know you're gonna get them you're gonna get them strung out bro you're gonna turn them out you're gonna be yeah. turning them out they, they'll be they'll be up at two o'clock in the morning looking for somebody they could get a referral for you you know what i mean yeah. i got a question for you all right this is this is going to show you my mind's at question for you do you know and you should and i'm gonna be surprised if you don't know this answer what is the average car payment that you that you have at your store do you approximately know what the average car payment is I, I would say it's probably in like the six six hundred range. Uh, Average between, though, about five, five between five or six. We get a lot of like well qualified people okay. to, that come into our store, which is a little different because in my last store it wasn't that way. So let's say five hundred. Follow where I'm going with this. Yeah, Here's the idea. Write this down, okay? And this is easy. This might you you might need to do this with the dealership, and they might think that you're crazy at first. And what you can do is. Here's my thing. Don't let them listen to this episode first. But you know what mm -hmm. I mean? You go to them and say, hey, I got an idea. Try to get your dealership to fund it because they should. If mm -hmm. they don't, ask them to split it. You know what I mean? Co-op you. And if not, invest in yourself. And then when you prove concept, then go back and say, look, this is working. I need you to, to, to do this or I'm going to stop. You know what I mean? So try to get mm -hmm. the dealership to do it. If not, get them to split it. If not, invest in yourself. Prove concept. Then get them to do it or then just let it go. But follow me on this. I've done this before. Step one. In your owner's box, you know what you do? Get a box, get a box from Moo Moo or like Kinko's or whatever, but the, like wherever you can get business cards and have, let's just say, um, 75, 50, 75 cards that are in there. And each one of these cards represents one of your people's car payments up to whatever you guys want to do. If it's 500 average, it'd be dope to do it to 500. But even if you did it to, you know, $400, you know what I'm saying? And then if the dealership, if the dealership was able to come up more than just a hundred, if the dealership did 200 or whatever, and you did 200 or however you want to do it, think about this. You have a handwritten letter in there and you could just verbally say to the people. So let's say I have my owner's box. Look at me, brother. And mm -hmm. I go to Anthony, thank you so much for purchasing this 2024 uh, Subaru Outback. I want to let you know that it's an honor to be able to work with you. And as a token of my appreciation, I want to give you the opportunity to allow me to pay for your car. Excuse me, what'd you say? I said, I want to give you the opportunity to allow me to pay for your entire car. What the heck do you mean, Sean? Well, in this owner's box, I have about 75 business cards in here and each one of them represents one of your car payments up to four hundred dollars every time i get one of these cards back we will make one of your car payments up to four hundred dollars they're referral cards dog think about that so if you arm in your box a, a thing of business cards because i i was doing this without the owner's box i would just get, have my dealers get a box of business cards and in there what it would do is a referral card it had my information on it and then on the back there was instruction that says you know in order to, to do this and to be able to pay it we need to acknowledge you know what i mean that this is a referral from you before the deal gets done we can't turn around and somebody come in work the deal and then slap this down you know what i mean and again if you know how tiana's got t got your keys and there's a referral program you have mm -hmm. to have like you have to when you're talking about this type of money it's got to be tracked or the dealership's not going to want to do because they don't want to get pencil whipped they don't want to turn around people to scam them or what have you but if you if you follow the rules legitimately and you don't try to scam or do anything crazy i'm not saying you but somebody else listen to this podcast then there's mm -hmm. no reason why not so just think about the logic how many cars do you sell a month uh between like 17 and when I was in Colorado, I'm still getting my pipeline up here in Georgia because I just started in January. Yeah, I just asked store. you the question. How many cars do you sell? About 17. Done. Okay, so follow me on this. So let's just round it up because, you know, instead of 75, let's just say 100 cards, right? Because it's because mm -hmm. they sell them 50, 100, 200, 500, whatever. So let's do the math. If you sell 17 people a month, 
mm-hmm. times 100 business cards, obviously that's 1,700 business cards a month get sent out times 12 months. That means in one year, you will have given 20,400 business cards, aka people's pay- car payments. How long do you think it's going to take before people are trying to get their car payments paid, dog? It's going to be short. And then what you do, you want social content? Can you imagine going on, on social media saying that and telling people that and showing people that? And then and then every time somebody comes in with the referral, there you go. You, you turn around and say, yo, I just made another person's car payment. Does your salesperson make your car payment? No. Well, come see me because I'll make your car payment. Yo, how, how gangster is that? Nah, it's good. I'm right. I'm literally writing everything you're saying down. Oh, this is don't forget we're on a podcast here. This is not just so again, you can go okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Later. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're having fun, but this is for the yeah. this is for the people. Listen, if you don't have access to Bradley on demand, you're missing out on crucial information. The top automotive groups like Coons, Lithia, and Norm Reeves have all used Bradley on demand to train their teams. And guess what? The world's number one car salesman, Cody Carter, shares his exclusive strategies right here. You want his secrets? You gotta have Bradley on demand. Stop waiting and start winning. Dominate your market. Click the link and get access now. But okay. Think- that's the type of stuff that I want you to cut. Brother, listen, I give you permission to color outside the lines. Stop thinking like regular people. Try to be like not ridiculous, but try to be creative and just think outside the box. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Like you don't have to sell cars the way that everybody else does. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Just think about that. Just think about if you were able, look at the rapport that you have and what you have that most people don't have. Is that you've got the branding, you've got the package, so it's it's not like vaporware. It's not like gonna sound like yeah, this dude's full of crap because you've got the aesthetics, you've got the packaging. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like if you if if I said, hey man, I got these super dope sneakers, they're this, that, and the other thing. It sounds good, but when I see the sneakers, when I see the box, like wow, that's pretty cool. So yeah. this is tangible. Kill them with value. What are your thoughts? That's great. No, that's that's fantastic. The whole content idea, I think, is fantastic because people want to see that type of stuff, you know, and it it gets me excited just listening to it. I know get people excited when they're getting their car payment made for them. Yeah, there's this there's a there's a guy back in the day. I I mean, I think he's back in the car industry. His name's Bill Hav. He worked in Pennsylvania, He worked for an independent dealership called Auto Approved. And he he did hashtag. If you're broke, it ain't my fault. That's him. He's got billboards. If you're broke, it ain't my fault. And what his thing was, was that he just was doing $200 referrals. That was it. It wasn't even special. $200 referrals. This man gave away $100,000 in one year of the dealer principal's money. But think about that. How many referrals did this guy get to be able to pay out a hundred grand? And then what he was doing, he would live stream every single time somebody came in. Part of the deal was he was he had to have permission to live stream them either getting the cash or the check mm-hmm. right there. Can you imagine if this guy's in your feed and every day or every week, definitely multiple times a week, you're scrolling and he goes, hashtag if if you if you're broke, it ain't my fault. It's like <laughs> yeah. it's like you get a no, you're like, all right, goddamn it, where's my two hundred dollars? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Okay. Okay, how can I get paid? How can I eat right now? Because I'm tired of everybody that's getting free 200 bucks. So it's psychology, you know what I mean? The more and more that you're putting that out there, I mean, it's just human nature. If, if I was connected to you somehow on social media and I kept on seeing, you know, give away, give away, give away, give away, referral, referral, car payment, car payment, car payment, owner's club box, owner's club. And I'd be thinking about, my salesperson don't do that. My dealership don't do that. The hell yeah. am I doing with these these lames? I need to get with yeah. him, right or wrong. No, nah, that's right. But what that's you right. do is you got to make people feel stupid for not working with you. And how do you do that? As you put it in their face. I don't mean like crazy Eddie like that. But I just yeah. mean you're just broadcasting. You're just broadcasting. You're just broadcasting. But you're doing it a respectful way. You're just like you're giving love to your clients. Like yeah, man, I really appreciate you. This is for you, but let the public see it. So all this stuff that you question for you, did you ever live stream or, or take video of people choosing their gifts and put it on your social media? No. Bro. Dude, yeah, now, now I feel- Tell me, what is wrong with you? <laughs> no, no, you're talking about, did, it, did it in the philosopher say if a tree falls in the woods? 
And if nobody's there, does it make noise? Do you know what a New Yorker says? Who gives a shit? If I'm not there, I don't give a fuck. You know what I mean? Yeah. So that's the thing. If nobody knows how special you are except for that person, then you're limited by that one person's perception of you. Broadcast it, dog. Broadcast Damn. it. That's good. <laughs> that's, yo. Content. Yeah. If everybody's IG is not filled up and TikTok's not filled up with stuff like that, bugging, I'm I'm about to start doing that. That's yes! genius. Yeah. Yes, I thought you were doing that already. Yes. Nah. What are you for? <laughs> nah, I wasn't. You're, um, you're you're like a super salesman on the low. You know what I mean? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. What? That's you're like crazy. A superhero with a super identity, bro. Okay, man, what, the fuck are you, what are you, Clark Kent? I'm gonna start calling you Clark Kent. <laughs> You're like super salesman, but you're like Clark Kent to the public. Yeah, yeah, yeah damn, that's crazy. Bro. That's that's a good ass <laughs> idea, man. Like, because it's it's kind of similar. Like, you see guys like like Mr. Beast and like people yes. on social media that do stuff like that. And he's it's crazy. Teslas, you saw that he, he's giving yes. Tesla, <laughs> dude. I I commented on that shit, and then like, uh, what is it called? It's crazy because Facebook and like IG will notify you when people that you know tag people and stuff like that yes dude oh my gosh i had i don't know how i didn't put two and two together thank it's you because, for that. <laughs> man, it, it's because you are being great at what you do you know what i mean yeah. and this is what synergy and collaboration is about you're so good in doing what you're doing you're in that zone you got to pop your head up and see what else is going on brother you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. yeah and we got a nice parts department too like you could do that type of stuff in there yeah it's like a little boutique that would be perfect you know can I just remind you something? Sales is about transference of energy. You know, I'm a master self promoter. I, I, you know that. You know what I mean? But it's it's but but it's not just me. If I, you know, what makes me such a good self promoter is that I'm not the only one promoting me. That's the thing. If mm -hmm. I'm the only one saying that Sean Bradley's great, then they'd be like, "Yo, this this dude is all about himself." But when I also have all those legions of fans and followers and clients and success and credibility that's trackable. It's real. It's not imaginary. So what you want to be able to do is have that social imprint. You want to have that social proof. You want to be able to get everybody else singing your praises. You feel me? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Nah, a hundred percent. Like the boxes would do that to a small degree, but that that is just making sure like you're you're getting a hundred percent accuracy. Yo, I just saw you just got open on that. I I yeah. can see it behind you. You're, <laughs> like, like, you're like, whoa. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I, my 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 brain is turning right now. I'm already thinking about uh, more ideas like that. But you know what it is, and this is what I like. This is this is why it's synergy, brother. Synergy is defined as two or more agents that come together are greater than the individual effect. I'm a G, I do what I do. You're a G, you do what you do. But when we come together, that synergy, that that information, that collaboration is just next level. And it happens when, when you are around other high level people, you feel me? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm sure like, if you talk to, you know, Damian Mills, you, you sit in politic with Roy Davila, if you talk yeah. to, you know, uh, Greg Gifford, you know what I mean? You talk to anybody that's 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 like this, bro, you can build. It's like Lego. It's like being a Lego master and you're a Lego mm -hmm. master. Even if you're not, you're a Lego master in training, you know what I mean? And mm -hmm. you're with a Lego master, then it's going to help you build some amazing Lego universe. You know what I mean? That's how my mind yeah. thinks. Yeah. Yeah. Now, I, you're I, doing so much, bro. You know what I mean? Like, you're doing a lot of things that most people that have been in the industry for, you know, decades have not even attempted to you're the biggest thing that you're doing is you're being proactive you're being different at the end of the day here's the keys to the business okay in my opinion in this industry one what is your value package proposition what is different and better about you and what you offer compared to anybody else subaru respectfully is not a tier one product it is not ford it is not toyota it is not honda it is not chevy it is not mercedes it is not bmw but it's a good product you know mm -hmm. what i mean what i'm saying by that is not it's not a snap to subaru i love the Subaru brand I, my, i've got a lot of like high level subaru clients my point is people have got choices so why should they choose you you've got to make people feel dumb i'm talking about dumb if they choose somebody else besides you you know what I mean? Like you ever been like so convinced, like, oh my God, that that's what I need right there. That mm -hmm. almost where you got to make people feel that if they talk to another salesperson, they're cheating on you. They feel dirty. They feel ashamed. They got to go <laughs> confess at, at church on Sunday that I, I, you know what, please forgive me. 
I, I, I talked to another salesperson. I don't know what I was thinking. Please forgive me. And I, and, and, and that, I'm being silly, but my point being is that you have to articulate that by what you offer and what you do. And it can't be vaporware because everybody says they're the best. We're number one. We're going to treat you right. We're family owned and operated and blah, 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 blah. You've got to have a real value package proposition. That's the mm-hmm. first thing to success. The second thing is sales is transference of energy. You've got to have that momentum and it can't just come from you. It's got to come from those local businesses that we were just talking about, the cross promotional marketing. It's got to come from your your prospects and your referrals and that energy has got to be out there. And it's totally okay because the world is consumed with people with cell phones and cameras. So you're not like a weirdo. Like when I started doing this, Mm -hmm. uh, internet sales 25 years ago. I started internet sales. I was the weirdo. I was the person that people said, oh, the internet schminternet. They thought internet sales was like hip hop music and they were wrong on both accounts. You feel me? Yeah. It's okay. Like you said, Mr. Beast and all the stuff that we do, make sure you evangelize it, brother. Yeah. Yeah. Which which is it's interesting because like I've I've used the box before to close somebody mm-hmm. because right now in this market like we have a lot of people that are like oh well you know this other dealership said I, I, they'll match your price yada yada you know and there was one client I had that said um, I booked an appointment I told them about the owners club up front just to kind of like I was using it as my value proposition package mm-hmm. and. Um, he had texted me the next day. He's like, Hey, I was actually canceling my appointment with the other dealership. And I told them what you offered me as far as like the price. And, um, he, he said, well, they said, if I come and buy the car tonight, they'll match the deal. He's like, well, what can you do, you know, to, to beat that? And I was like, well, I honestly, I just hit him back and I kind of like made him feel stupid. I was like, well, you know, I haven't even met you yet, you know, and I gave you this, this great price. And, if I'm understanding you correctly, they haven't beat my offer. Now it's the same exact car. Theirs is white. Mine is green. Um, I, I completely understand if you want the white one, but I didn't make it an ultimatum. I, I offered you this up front. Now, a hundred percent, I would want to earn your business. That is my goal, you know, but if they haven't beat my offer, then what, it, what, what is this conversation about? You know, um, and then the guy was like, well, I guess you're right. They haven't, you know, you haven't met me yet. You gave me that number. You you told me that you wanted me part of the owner's club. And I sent him a box. And I was like, you told me this wife, this car was for your wife. I was like, I would love to welcome both of you guys to the owner's club. I already got, I already got an idea of like gifts that I was putting in the box. And the guy actually was like, you know, I, he kind of like backed off and it didn't become about price at that point. It was about the experience that I was offering him up front and I was transparent with it. Um, whereas like back in COVID, I was surprising people with it, but I, mm-hmm. now I talk about it kind of like how you're saying, promote it, promote it, promote it. I haven't branched it over to the internet side of things yet, but I used it on one deal that specific way. And I didn't have to beat the price that I gave him initially. He was okay with the first price that I gave him came in and did business with us. And I made the other store like, now the other store has to try a little bit harder next time they try to like scalp a deal from us because I'm putting more value than just a cheaper price. Because to me, it's not about having the cheapest price on the market, but it's about, you know, painting a picture and giving somebody an experience. Listen to me, brother. There's a, there's a very powerful word, word track that I love when somebody says something even close to what that guy just said. So if mm-hmm. it was you that said it, I say, Anthony, let me just say this right now. The price you receive elsewhere needs to be weighed against the value you're going to receive with me. And that's my opening. And I could say that, but think about it. That statement is so powerful. The price you receive elsewhere needs to be weighed against the value that I'm going to provide you. Mm. You know, and then you could go in and explain the value package proposition. Because at the end of the day, understand the rules of engagement. Why do we do the road to the sale? Why do we do a product presentation, features and benefits walk around? Why do we do a demonstration drive? Why do we uh, do a service walk? Excuse me, why do we do all that stuff? For one reason, to build value. Mm-hmm. We want to build max value before we talk numbers and negotiate. Does that make sense? Yeah. So, yeah, no, I think that it's spot on. I would just tweak that a little bit with that little in, initial part of the word track. But mm-hmm. man, you, you have the DNA 
metaphorically speaking, for for success in this, you have something different. You have something tangible. You have something valuable. You have something exciting, um, and you've got a good presentation with it. So all you got to do is make those little tweaks that we talked about today, man, and we're going to go forward. Well, listen, brother, I could go on and on, but we've been we're 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 out of time today. You know, what I mean, yeah. I just look up yeah. and I'm like, damn. I appreciate all your time and thank you so much for sharing your wisdom. Uh, I, I really was impressed with you at IS20G. And before that, I look forward to continuing to sharing your success and take these uh, things that we talked about today and put them together and then let me know how it turns out. All right. Yeah. Yeah. I got a whole page and I'm, I got to listen back because I stopped taking notes for a second, but I'm <laughs> excited. <laughs> I'm excited. But I, I appreciate you having me on the show and uh, being able to share, you know, information with everybody and everybody coming together with good synergy. It's great, man. Thank you very much. And we're going to do this again one day. So I appreciate you and, and we'll catch up. OK, brother. Cool, man. Have a good night. Okay. <laughs>